Welcome to Adapting Class. Pain, comfort, sleep, and rest are the most tested concept on the ankles because it's a risk reduction. It's also fundamentals. So fundamentals of nursing. We're going to use common sense to ascertain how you questions with complete rational to help you master these areas that will trick you. But it's straightforward, common sense. We're going to attack them each and you will figure out how to answer them. Don't worry, I got you, let's get to it. The first question you can see is a straightforward question, but if you don't pay attention to the buzzword, you may lose it. That is why I said, listen to the question, read it carefully, and apply some common sense focusing on the buzzword. What is the question? Which PRN medication should the nurse anticipate to manage a common side effect of opiate? The nurse is reviewing orders for a client receiving opiate. What PRN medication should you anticipate that you get it? I know what the answer is most people is going to choose because it's a trap. But think about it. It's not a hard question. You've seen this before. I'm receiving opiate. You know what it's used for. It's for pain. But what is the one, one side effect about this medication? What do you think? I give you 10 seconds. Stop the video, answer it, but apply some common sense and said, okay, I'm taking the pain medication, right? Number one side effect cannot be what? A pain medication, right here. Acetaminophen is a pain medication. So I've already eliminated that one. Second, I know opiate causes constipation, right? And what do we use loperamide for? For diarrhea. I don't have diarrhea when I take opiate. Therefore, that is eliminated. Now you're left with this. Common sense should tell you that we give people with what? Uh, taking opiate naloxone. Why? Because we want to stop or avoid the most serious side effect associated with this medication. It's a major side effect. It's not a common side effect. It's an overdose. When you have to take naloxone, it's because you have overdose opiate. And that is the answers most people will choose. I can tell a lot of people 80% will pick naloxone. But when you think about it, opiate causes nausea. And one of these major common side effect associated with opiate is what? Nausea. And therefore, I give you a dancing chart. I made a YouTube shot about this in order to help you. But this is applying common sense. It's what? A dancing it will treat the nausea associated with opiate. That's why we tell you to take it with food, not with an empty stomach. Don't pick naloxone. Otherwise, that's a trap. Read a question. Pay attention to the buzzword and you get it. Second question, what, which is the most appropriate action a nurse is preparing to implement non-pharmacological intervention for a client with what? Chronic lower back pain. Which is the most appropriate action? I always say, read the question and then come up with the buzzword. They said appropriate, most. That means all of this can be an answer. But what, which one of those is the most appropriate? But the buzzword in the question, I call it the buzzword. You should be buzzing in your ear. Why do that put non-pharmacological? That means there's something called pharmacological. Non-pharmacological means there's no pharmacology associated with it. Therefore, when I look at the answer and I see a pharmacology, I'm not picking it. Stop the video, five minutes or five seconds, answer the question, what do you think? I said non-pharmacological for your lower back pain. That means I'm not giving you any pain medication. The ankles exams is sometimes straightforward, sometimes tricky, but at the same time, test the key strategy and you apply some common sense. There's a reason why I said non-pharmacological. If you pick an answer choice because I have lower back pain, that has what? Pain medication in it, 
is automatically wrong. Therefore, look at it. PCA is a pump for pain, right? Opiate is a pump for pain. I'm left with A and B. Of the client, a warm blanket versus comfort position and apply heating pad. Which one is most better? A warm blanket does not provide enough what non-pharmacological pain. When you apply heat to the direct area where the problem is, you providing a non-pharmacological and putting the patient in the right position, providing a non-pharmacological intervention for the chronic back pain. Like I told you, these questions are not hard. Number two is the right answer, but some buzzword, some common sense and test-taking strategy. These questions is designed to teach you so that whatever you see, whatever question they give you, I'm not saying they're going to give you this, but the concept is the same. If you see a question on non-pharmacological, please use this strategy. Same thing. Which client should the nurse assess first after receiving shift report? Prioritization 101. Best care and comfort is under fundamentals. And that is why Anklis love it. That's why he has a different subgenet. Pain, comfort, and sleep. A client with chronic arthritis requesting a back rub. Somebody need a back rub. A client who received what? Morphine 30 minutes ago. What is happening? It's not arousable, difficult to arouse. A client requesting to watch television before you want to sleep. It's not a good idea to watch TV before you sleep anyway. A client with a PRN sleep aid or that requesting medication. You want some medication to sleep. All of them are fine. They want something to do something. But the other one, you already gave him pain medication and you can't wake him up. Who are you going to see? Prioritization 101. Opiate, I can't wake up. It's a respiratory depression. Number three, it's not the right answer. Number four, it's not the right answer. Number one, it's not the right answer. They can wait. Somebody I give you opiate who cannot wake up is the one I'm going to see. Number two is your right answer. Four, a client with insomnia asks the nurse for help sleeping, right? Which intervention is best? Trust me, the concept about sleep insomnia is everywhere. Wherever you go, it's going to be the same. So when you watch this video, I want you to jot down the key fact about sleep. They love it. Sleep comfort, okay? Sleep comfort and pain. That is what we do as a nurse, right? That's what you guys do as a nurse. So which one is the best answer? Offer a warm caffeinated beverages. Turn on the television. Encourage relaxation breathing and limit screen to use, and keep the room temperature on the warmer side. That's a principle about sleep. The, and those are what we call sleep hygiene. Pay attention, sleep hygiene number one, no caffeinated drink, no sedative medication, right? Quiet environment as much as possible. Realization, breathing technique, yes, good. If you want to exercise, not a vigorous exercise, at least four, three hours before. And then the temperature in the room should be on the colder side. Warmer side is wrong. Caffeinated drink is wrong. Even if they say decaffeinated, it still has caffeine in it. Turn on the television is wrong. Encourage realization and limit screen use is the right answer. That's a good sleep hygiene. This not question is just bread and butter, nursing care fundamentals, nursing care, rest, pain, comfort, right? A, pain, a nurse is caring for a client to report pain rated eight out of 10. If the patient said, I have pain, eight out of 10. What do you think you should do? What do you think you should do? Just give them the pain medication or to so document their pain level eight out of 10. You already know that it's eight out of 10. Give them their prescribed pain medication. Know the location, the quality, and the characteristics of the pain. Where is the pain located? What is the quality, sharp or dull? And is it going anywhere? Or let the doctor know. You cannot intervene without making an assessment. We cannot intervene 
without making assessment, common sense tells us. Therefore, the straightforward fundamentals, the way to the way to beat fundamental is this. I know I will document the pain, but that's not the most important. I know the quality, the location, where is it located? Your head, your knee, your chest. If it's in the chest, I take priority, right? That means you're having chest pain. I can't give you acetaminophen or morphine if you're having chest pain, right? I got to pay more attention about something else. Therefore, three is the right answer. A post-operative client refuses pain medication, stating, I don't want to get addicted. These are common things anxious will ask you. It's a concept. Patients say this all the time. They don't want to get addicted because they are afraid, but they just had surgery. But that's the buzzword, post-operative client. That means patient had surgery. We got to manage your pain. What is the next best response? You may be overreacting. Addiction is unlikely. Let's wait and see how you feel later. Pain control is important for healing and we will monitor you closely. It is your choice, but you should take the medication. This is a therapeutic communication fundamentals regarding pain and management. Ask for more questions. Don't judge. And if you answer the patient question, ask for more. What is the problem? This is the opportunity to provide therapeutic care and education. You may be overreacting. How do you know? The person is trying to figure out what is going on. They said they don't want to be get ad addicted. Educate them or ask for more questions. Let's wait. We are not waiting to feel how you, how you feel better. No. Educate them about pain. How is it going to affect their, their healing? And how are you going to provide some comfort? It's your choice. You're basically letting the patient make a decision that is inappropriate. Three is the right answer. And there's note that the client continues to report pain despite receiving schedule analgesic. Even though you're giving them all the medication that they need, they still having pain. What would you do? Encourage the client to tolerate the pain, re-administer the same dose, give them another dose, reassess their pain level, and let the doctor know for adjustment. Tell the client that they may receive the maximum dose. Maximum dose is basically overdose. It's not good, right? What would you do? Encourage the patient to tolerate the pain. It's not a good idea. Manage their pain. Giving the same dose and the thing is not working is not going to help. Figure out what you gave them was successful to manage their pain. So we assess their pain level. Has it gone down from 10 to 5? Yeah, that means it works. If it has not gone down, then you need to you know what to do. So it is not appropriate to intervene without no assessing after giving the pain medication. Assess them, see the effect of the medication before you give them another one. So three is the best answer. Common sense, right? And then she's caring for hospitalized older adult client who is experiencing sleep disturbances, which factor may most likely contribute to the client's poor sleep. This one is a longer question, but the answer choice is straightforward. Look at the question where patient is in the hospital, right? It's not at home. It's in the hospital and he's having what? He or she is having sleep disturbances. That means there's change in the environment. There's environmental factor regarding pain and sleep. Therefore, what is the most? Of course, it may be they may have vision problem. They, they may have a medical problem. They can get out of bed, so they have come more. But look at it. It says the patient is having sleep disturbances after being admitted. The most likely thing is a change in the environment. Influenced by what? You go in there every time to do intervention and the noise. I never say anything patient can see. I never say patient has any arthritis. I never say a patient cannot get out of bed yet, bed cycle more. He has nothing to do with sleep. What affects sleep is hygiene, environment, and other conditions. Two is your right answer. And this is another one just to test your content level, but at the same time, common sense. What goal is the most appropriate? 
That is the appropriate goal. A nurse is developing care plan for a client with what chronic pain is pain. What goal is most appropriate? Therefore, what would you do? A patient has chronic pain. What is your appropriate management or the most appropriate things you should do or your goal? A client will report no pain. Client will sleep uninterrupted for 12 hours. Client will identify two non-pharmacological techniques to manage their pain. Client will receive morphine every four hours. Think about it. A goal has to be realistic. It has to be measurable. Every next action, when you have a goal, you should be able to be able to measure that goal and be able to achieve it. Report no pain for a patient with the chronic pain made pain issue is unrealistic. One is gone. Sleeping for what? 12 hours uninterrupted is unrealistic with the patient who has chronic back pain or whatever pain is it. It's not possible. Giving them pain medication every four hours is not a realistic. It's not going to solve the problem. That's not your goal. Your goal is for them to have non-pharmacological management of their pain so that they can achieve pain control without a pain medication. And three is the right answer. And the last one, because I know sleep is very important. This is just keywords that you may see in sleep questions that um, if you should know. And this is developing a care plan for a client who is critically here in the ICU. Which intervention will promote normal rest and sleep? Selected apply. These are content you have to know. No matter what, when you see sleep and then and rest, these are the thing. Turn off the equipment alarm at night. Guess what? Patient is critically here. If you turn off all the alarm, patient is going to get into trouble. You may have a cardiac arrest. You will not hear it. The ventilator will stop. You may not hear it. Just because they, they, you want to promote normal sleep and then rest doesn't mean you should shut everything down, right? Dim the light at night. Yes, that promotes sleep. The darker the place, the better. Leave the television off. Quiet environment. That is good. Open what? The shields and windows at night. No, at night, you want the place to be dark, right? During the days when you open the chairs and the windows, so that's a trap. Schedule most intervention activities at night. Most intervention activities at night should be what? Most intervention activities should be done during the day so that the night they can have rest. Therefore, which one will promote normal rest and sleep? Turn off equipment alarm at night is not a good idea. Two dimming the light is good. Leaving the television off is good. The shells is a trap. It should be done during the in the morning or at night. And activity should be done in the in the morning. Therefore, two and three are your right answer. Then questions are yield, sleep, comfort, rest, and pain.